Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Eric Van Royen joins us now. Eric, after your victory, you said you were going to visit with your best friend. How was your visit with John? Yeah, it was good. It was needed. Um, it was a bunch of us. It was uh, me, Alex, um, a few old college teammates. We're all very close. And we're all close to John. So we were all down at the Mayo Clinic yesterday visiting him um, and saying our last goodbyes. Tell us about John, Eric. I know obviously you're very close with him, but what, what should people know about John Trasimar? Well, I'll tell you a story. I came to the US in 2009 for the first time to come play college golf at the University of Minnesota. Um, John is from Minnesota, area called, a town called Blue Earth area. And he drove two, two and a half hours to come to the airport um, just to see me for five minutes and say hi. That's the type of guy that he is. You know, he's um, got an amazing heart. He loved golf. He still played professionally. And um, in April, he was cancer-free. And he was going to try and go back to Q school this year. And then, obviously, the cancer came back. And um, things took a turn for the worse. But um, John was an incredible competitor. You know, he called me and I asked him how he's doing. And, and he'd always say, I'm doing great. Um, things are going well. And meanwhile, he's, he's in pain. Um, and he's struggling, and, and that, that's the type of guy he is. His, his glass is always half full and um, just a heart this big, just a massive heart. So um, just a spectacular guy. Eric, you said you and your teammates visited him to say your goodbyes. Was he aware of what you accomplished this past week? Yeah, he was aware. Uh, um he was sort of dozing in and out throughout conversation yesterday. But on Sunday, uh, um, Donald Constable, an old teammate of ours, he was there on Sunday and they were watching golf and they were saying he, he perked up every time I had to hit in the last hour of play. Apparently he was glued to the screen. So I'm glad we could bring a smile to his face. And, you know, yesterday we talked a lot about um, college times rounds of golf that we played together and he'd smile and he, he talked about course design to some of our friends and he'd just get the biggest smile on his face. So, I mean, he was absolutely mad about golf. Um, so, yeah, yesterday was, was special. You said after you won on Sunday, Eric, that you didn't really feel stressed because there are obviously such more important things in life. Yeah. But, and while I understand that golf doesn't seem stressful in that kind of situation against that kind of backdrop, you had to feel a little bit of stress going into that week. You were the guy on the bubble in terms of what you yeah. said was your job to do to keep your status yeah. on the PGA Tour. How much stress did you feel outside of, of all of the personal anguish around John? Yeah, um, you're spot on, Eamon. Um, it's still my job and it's still my dream to play PGA Tour. So there was pressure. Um, I think I almost felt more of that previously in during the season during the, the bigger part of the season um because i was coming back from injury last year and up until recently my golf struggled um and i was feeling the pressure earlier and um started working with sean foley about three months ago and a lot of conversation we have is about perspective about the fact that um you know one day when my time comes um, and I kick the bucket. Um, what is it that I'm going to remember? And it's going to be the people that you're with, um, the loved ones that will be in that room. That's what you're going to want to talk about. So, um, ever started working with Foley, that's the type of conversations we've had perspective, um, the fact that I'm a massive competitor and I want to win, but it's secondary to um, getting better every day and following this process, as cliche as that sounds. So, I felt that pressure early in the season, and I think slowly but surely, um, it almost started just um, sitting on the back burner. And whether I made, you know, kept my card and finished top 125 or not, I was still going to play professional golf somehow, somewhere, whether it be Corn Ferry or DP World Tour, and, and try and claw my way back into the top echelons of the game. So I knew I would always have golf. Um, the pressure was there on Sunday, uh, but, you know, it was secondary to few other things. Eric, you said whether you won or lost, it wouldn't have mattered, but did you sense that something <laughs> mystical, something magical, was there something larger 
at work <laughs> happening last week. Yeah, yeah, with that it out to my mind. Um, on hole 15, um, you saw Matt Kuchar make an eight um, on Saturday, an absolute treacherous hole if you miss it on the left. And on Sunday, I pulled my, my second shot left of a flag that is left. And so midway through the flight, I was I gave up on it. Um, and I thought it was going to go down into the penalty area and uh, probably double bogey written all over it. And by grace of our Heavenly Father, it stayed up somehow, you know. And it's funny in that moment because I got up to it and you know how it's sort of etiquette for the player who's furthest away to play. And even though I was just on the fringe, I asked Matt, I was like, Matt, do you mind if I come up? And he kind of gave me a smile and said, yeah, come up. Because I was so worried about that ball rolling down um, and into the hazard because it was just balancing on one little blade of grass. That moment, um, if I look back now, was it just, it's almost as if the whole day was just meant to be. You played that last nine holes, eight under par, Eric. Uh, it was quite spectacular to watch coming down the stretch. What does it feel like to be in a zone like that, that most of us, we couldn't find our way there with a bag full of travellers' checks. We'd never get there. What does that feel like for the rest, for, for a guy like you? It's hard to explain because, um, you know, the whole day, I wasn't really in it. Um, I mean, Camilo got off to a hot start. Matt made a few birdies early. And, and I, mean, I started with bogey on one, right? Um, kind of a soft bogey, to be honest. And um, so immediately I was behind the eight ball, but we had a conversation. Alex and I had a conversation on the eighth fairway where I looked and I looked at him and I said, you know, I really want to win this thing. And he smiled at me. He's like, trust me, me too. And then he said, but the one thing we can't do is push because the minute you push and you try and go at flags that, that aren't, you know, there to be aimed at, um, you're going to start making bogeys and, and, you know, then there's just no way. So, and ironically, I missed that green and then got it up and down. But what the one hole that we talked about not pushing. Um, so I just kind of hung around. And when that set up on 15, and then when I made the putt on 16, of like, okay, hang on, like, you know, something, something's going to happen here. And then I drained the one on 17, which was mind blowing. Um, and walking to the tier 18, I'm just trying to breathe. I'm like, one step at a time, just breathe. Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, I was two over for 18, for hole 18 um, that week, which again is a super easy part half. And um, I was like, just get this thing in. So the zone is a strange place. The minute you try and get there, you're probably, it's probably going to slip through your fingers. Um, um, I didn't push at all, and it just came together. Eric, I know your heart is heavy. Your golf and your humanity were something to behold this past week. Thank you so much. Pleasure, guys, and thank you for having me.